friends, welcome to Awkward Blue Boutique. If you guys are new here, you guys don't know who I am. My name is Z. So today I'm going to be doing a screen record and a pop presentation for you guys. So today's topic is how I made 10K revenue on my first year on Etsy. Okay, so before I begin this presentation, I want to say um, a disclaimer for you guys. Um, everything that I share in today's video may or may not work for you guys. So these are just suggestions or tips that I found work for myself. Um, I know that $10,000 is a pretty small revenue. Uh, yeah, but it was Etsy was a really, really, um, it was a really difficult um, platform to try to, you know, to start from scratch. And you have to do a tons of research and a lot of um, trial and error to make your Etsy work. And these are just things that I found make it work for myself. So if you guys are not interested in anything that I have to say, um, you guys can click off this video right now because I'm not about, um, you know, negative things about people that share about the revenue and, you know, just tips and tricks for their Etsy. So if you guys, um don't have anything good to say please don't say it in the comment so in the comment um if you guys have question after i finish the presentation then you guys can leave question and i'll try to answer the best as i can but other than that um you guys can give me recommendations ideas things like that but please uh, refrain yourself from saying anything negative about um etsy or anything about people's revenue Hey, so here we go, you guys. So in this presentation, I'm gonna be just speaking based on my experience and how I made 10K revenue on my first year on Etsy. This is not a video for me to brag. Um, 10K is a pretty small amount, but I'm really proud of myself because Etsy is a really difficult um, platform to be selling. Um, there's a lot to learn. So I'm really proud of myself getting this far my first year. Um, back in 2017, I have started Etsy, but I wasn't really motivated. I didn't know what I was doing, and I gave up. But in that time that I started, I only opened my shop for probably three months, and I made four sales on my own without knowing anything. <laughs> but, you know, since then, Etsy has changed, and um, I don't really remember much about it. So I had to start, start everything from scratch. So I started a new shop in 2020. And since I started new, um, I started with a different product, which is T-shirt. So, yeah, that's another story that I will talk about if you guys want to hear about my experience when I started back in 2017. But yeah, so today just about this new Etsy shop and tip and tricks that um, helped me make consistent sales on Etsy and that brought me up to 10K revenue, okay? So 10K revenue is not, it's just, um, you know, it doesn't take into account all the things that go back to the business that I have to pay for inventory and fees and all these things. So it's not my uh, actual profit. It's just revenue from Etsy. So before I open my Etsy shop, I have a plan. So you need to have a plan because if you don't have a plan, then you don't know what direction you're heading toward. So have a plan, have it written down if you can. So I actually have like a business, um, write a business plan that I wrote starting before I started my Etsy shop. And then have a product in mind. So you need to um, select a few product that you want to offer to your target audience, okay? Because that's what business is, right? Unless you're doing service, and yeah, it's a little bit different. So I also got my permit license to operate my business in my house. Um, this is not necessarily, this is not necessary yet, but I want to get it out the way so I don't have to think about it. You guys can get them later down the road, but I want to get it done. So I got like all the necessary documents in place. And then you need a bank account because you need a way to pay Etsy because it's not, it's free to open an Etsy account, but it's not free to list 
stuff. So you need to have a big account so they can charge you the listing fee and all the other fee that they charge. And then you need a way to keep track of like your sales. So have a bookkeeping system and I use QuickBook, but you guys can use like Excel, whatever you guys want to use that works for your business. And then have a tracking inventory. This is really crucial because you don't want to run to um, the risk of not having enough inventory to create your product because you need to ship um, your item within the allotted time and like that when you set up your Etsy shop you need to have a processing time for you how long the customer is going to get the product so you need to uh, try to meet that processing time and if you have like a quick turnaround you need to have pro inventory enough inventory on hand so you can make the item and ship it out ASAP so you stay within your processing time unless you have prior arrangement or you communicate with the customer that their product will be delayed and that you will work out with them. Yeah, so it's really crucial to have inventory tracking so you know when to order, how much to order, okay? And then I would suggest um, have a shop name, banner, logo, business card all made before so you don't have to worry about it. And then have all your packaging too because you need to know how you're going to send that item to your customer. So have all that ready to go and figure out um, the method that you're going to be shipping, like whether you're going to use USPS or UPS. And also have a scale because you don't want to go to the post office all the time. So when you have all this layout before you open um your life will be a little bit much better so you can put all the focus onto other things okay that's why i said have all these done beforehand before opening and um, publishing your etsy stuff like that that's just me i didn't want to publish anything on my etsy shop until i get all this done so they don't stick in my head and make me worry okay so i can just focus on making things and just marketing okay the next thing is product photography you guys product photography is really really important because if you don't take the time to photograph your item beautifully then people mostly not want to buy from you because they don't think you're professional or you, you're just probably like a person that, you know, and just want to make some money on the side that just throw things on Etsy and don't care about taking the time to present their product, you know. So product photography is really, really important. And here on the side, I show you guys how I photograph um, my shirt. So I still kids birthday shirt and it's embroidery. It's not sublimation or heat transfer or whatever these are in border item so t-shirt is a really broad niche but i narrowed it down to embroidery and birthday okay so i mostly focus on birthday kids birthday shirt and also like seasonal wear and um everyday shirt i do offer those like but mostly it's focused on kids birthday shirt and so I have studio lighting and props just so I have a consistency of lighting. I don't want to use the sunlight outside because the sunlight is not always. It's, they say it's the best lighting, but that, you know, it depends on the day, what time that you photograph. And I want to be able to photograph whenever I want to because I have kids and I'm a mom. So, you know, I want to have... Uh, my studio lighting and my photography area all set up and ready to go. So when I made a sample or if I made a shirt for somebody, I can just photograph quickly and I don't have to wait for the sun. And you don't need any special camera, just your iPhone works or your smartphone and Android phone works also. And I would suggest having 
a neutral backdrop. Most people use neutral backdrop, so then your item can pop out. But it depends on your brand too, so you can use whatever backdrop you want. I just feel like the neutral backdrop with like the wood green or the ship lap、um, design in the back works really well in my case. And you can also DIY or buy photography backdrop from Hoop Mama, Fox Drop, or Amazon. And I also suggest trying to photograph your product like at different angles and viewpoint, just so you can let your customers see the product from different angle. And a really popular、um, style of photography for clothing is flat lay. Okay, so if you guys don't have like a Dress for mini me. You guys can do flat lay. It's really popular. So the last thing is, if you can, but it's not necessary. I don't do it because I, it's a lot of work. Like you have to find people to wear your item and you know photograph them. I don't have the time to do that, and I don't want to pay anybody to do it yet because I'm just starting out. I'm just testing the water. And learning about this business, so I didn't do that, and it seems to work. I mean, since I already take like, I think my photos are good enough. But a lot of people do suggest this to me a lot to have lifestyle photograph. But I, it's just, it's not necessary. Like I didn't want to get into it because that's gonna take more effort, money for me, and so. At the beginning stage, I just want to learn as much as I can about the business, and I don't want to worry too much about having lifestyle、um, photograph. But if you have the means and the time, you you guys can dedicate to this part so people can see how your product or your item is used. So this live, I'm going to be talking about marketing strategy. So. I did wrote a whole like page or whatever about marketing strategy for for my business, but still, like I didn't implement everything because I'm a mom. I mean, I'm not gonna give that excuse, but it's just that、um, it's a lot to learn, you guys. And so I just opened my Instagram, TikTok, Facebook business page came later along the road. I don't think those did much work for me,、um, but I will tell you guys what what actually work is mostly my SEO. But that will be the next live show that I will be sharing with you guys. I just did all this、um, like word of mouth and IG TikTok. I just set up these、uh, social media platform up so. I have them, so I can post things on there. But I don't think they did much for my Etsy shop. And then, one thing is also follow your target audience. Like I have some customer that tag me on IG. That's why I set it up so I can put it on my business card when I send out to customer. And I have have some customer that tag me photo of their kids wear、um, my item on. Instagram, and then I will follow them, and then I will check who follow them, and who who they follow. So then I will follow those people, just so you know they see me that I follow them. They might be interested and follow me back, and then when I posting on IG, might spark the interest. So it's just a whole thing of following、um, your target audience, and、um, in case they、uh, might like something that you post and buy from you. So that's why I say. Follow them, see what they are doing, see what they are posting. Yeah. So the next thing is post everything you make social media because you never know what attracts people and what will bring you、um, sales. And then lastly, I, I put Etsy ads at the end because I didn't use Etsy ad. I tried to learn everything about marketing and everything about Etsy. First, before I even run ad, so I, I didn't start using ad until Angela、um, helped me. So if you guys want to see that video, it's on Angela's, Angela's Jasmina. If you guys are in the border net, you guys would know who Angela Jasmina is.、Um, that's her YouTube. So she she 
and myself did a video together where she helped me. So you guys can go and look at that. And then also run sales um, once in a while. So, you know, it'll help um, people see that you're having sales and that people might buy, you know. I don't think that really works for me, but I mean, some people say it works, but I don't think it works for me. I just put it there because I think it works sometimes and doesn't work with the ads and the sales. So, and this is the most important slide. Okay, when you're when you did everything in the beginning, and and nothing is moving, so this is, is important because. Almost everybody that talk about Etsy talk about SEO. I think it's important at this point because you want to be found, okay? So people can buy your pr product. Um, so me, for me to learn about SEO, I didn't know what the heck is it. So it stands for search engine optimization. It's just keywords that you use. Um, that customer are searching for so they can find your product and you want to be ranked like in the top three page because people don't really go farther than the first three or five page you know i don't anyways sometimes do but sometimes i don't you know so for me to uh, learn about seo i joined tons of facebook group i joined um important business group how to group on facebook just so i i learn a lot I try to learn everything and anything about my niche and then also everything anything about Etsy so join those group find them on Facebook and join them so you guys will get a lot of tips and tricks from those group too and then the next thing I did to learn about SEO is I listen to a lot of podcasts okay um, one of them is Lauren Kaplinger um, I was in her Facebook group and that's how I found her podcast. She has tons of information and about Etsy on her podcast. Sometimes I just listen so it keeps me motivated to work on my own Etsy shop. So if you like podcasts, you guys listen to that. And then you guys can also just listen to a bunch of things on YouTube and TikTok. Like I don't think people Notice that there is a tons of resource on TikTok too about Etsy. So try to learn as much as you can. And after you learn all this, try to implement them. Like don't just listen, but also take some notes and implement them and see what works for your store. Because I hear a lot of people say, I have tried everything X, Y, Z. There, there's a lot of things and I'm not for sure, not maybe not. Not everybody have tried everything. And if you have tried everything doesn't work, then maybe it's your item. So you have to take into consideration that the item is probably not something people want to buy or maybe just some people want to buy, but not a lot of people want to buy. Or maybe the right, the people that you're trying to target is not finding you, okay? So there's a lot of factors that goes into why it's not converting to sales. And then the next thing is, Learn to use e-ring sales samurai marmalade. Um, these are search, these are website that helps you, you know, learn about your particular market niche and also help you learn about long tail keywords that you can use for your Etsy listing. You know, and then the next thing I would say, try to use Pinterest. And the Etsy search bar in Google because these are free. Um, Sales Samurai e ring and Marmalade are not free, they are a subscription. You can use the free version, but that is not gonna probably not gonna give you all the data that you want. But I say start out using Etsy, Pinterest, and Google for um, to find your good keyword because you, when you start out, you probably don't know how to describe your product, right? Like when I start, I I was just like, it's just an embroidered t-shirt. Like, that's all That's all in my vocabulary. I don't know how to describe it. So I would do tons of um, 
search on Etsy, search bar, Pinterest, and Google, and they will give me tons of new ideas of keywords that I can use for my own listing, okay? So I learned that from joining all the Facebook groups. So that's why I put join Etsy Facebook group and Border How to group or whatever niche you're in. Join those groups, learn from those experts. There's tons of people that are successful and expert in those groups that you can learn, ask questions in there. And then be patient and don't change your SEO too much because if you change it too much, it doesn't give that listing a chance for it to be in the Etsy algorithm and to be found. So try to be patient. And what you can do if, if you have a lot of keywords that you want to use, you can duplicate that same exact listing again and use those extra keywords. So you have two listings that are the same but with different keywords and titles and tag. So you can see what keyword is working for which one. So that's another way you can test it out. So you, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people just think like, I need to list one product for only one listing. You know, you can li duplicate the same item like two or three times. And then the next thing I want to talk about, I'm not going to go like really deep into pricing, but I find that I pr price my stuff competitively um, that I don't have to make so much sale and work so hard to be making the same amount of money as another person. Um, this is what will work for my shop. It might not work for you guys, but I say don't be afraid to charge what your products were. I find that some people charge too low and that work so hard. And I'm not about that. I want to make my life easy, you know, so I charge accordingly. Because before I start, you guys, I, I did a lot of practice and tests and research before I even start selling. I know some people just jump, start selling, but that's not me. Like I did testing. I have bought from other Etsy shop and see how they package. Like I did all this um, test and study before I even start my Etsy shop. So I know what my product is worth and, you know, how how professional how quality my item is so if you did all those tests beforehand you know how quality your item is then charge according don't be afraid because you're just starting you feel like you're starting out you don't want to charge um competitive competitively like your competitor um you know i'm not a i'd rather not have a sale than have my price like really low has tons of sale and work so hard you know so that's why that's my philosophy anyway so i ch charge competitively even i'm just starting out so and don't be afraid because the photo of your work will speak for itself and customer will buy um i know a lot of people say this because they're just starting out they feel like people's not gonna buy it if their price are too high you know the right i'd rather have the right customer and buy it than not the right customer and waste my time and energy on the people that not willing to buy it and just want it for a cheap price yeah so that's my whole philosophy okay And so the last thing is charging competitively will help you make more profit, thus making your time worthwhile. So I believe this is true, okay? Because you don't want to waste your time on people that don't want to make your time and effort worthwhile. And then the next thing is I would suggest you guys have a weekly to-do plan for your Etsy. You have to treat this like a business. If you treat this as a hobby, then it's going to be a hobby. So these are just things that I find myself trying to do once a week or once a month. Um, listing, you don't have to do new listing every day, but I try to do it um, as often as I can. But it's really hard because when you try to keep up with orders and then try to make new things, 
oh my gosh, you guys, it's a lot of work. And plus, I'm a mom, so that's just、um, me. Like, I couldn't get out new listing every day, but I tried to do probably like five a month. And you guys know, no matter how much we hate the administration side of the business, it needs to be done. So try to do them、um, as much as you you guys can on a weekly basis, so you guys don't have to、um, worry a lot when it comes to tax time. And then the last thing I say, have a system of how you work and batch your work, so. You can get things done on time and meet your deadlines, so you don't get bad reviews. But sometimes you still get bad reviews, but because some people are just like nothing satisfying them, you know. So, but at least you did your end and check everything off, so you know that you're delivering everything、um, correctly on your end. So if customer complain, you know how to defend yourself. And if they complain something that's out of your control, then you know, oh well, because I do have customers that have done that. But that's just like a small percentage, like probably like out of all the order that I have, probably three people complain. So you guys can see that、um, the complaint is just really minimal. And those people that complain are just they just complain about something that is out of my control that I did not even make a mistake on. So yeah. So make sure you have a weekly to do, okay? So because this will help make you feel like it's a business that you're running it week week to week or day to day because you're not going into work. So if you don't have a weekly to do or a daily to do,、um, you might be procrastinating and slacking, and that your ads is not gonna be making any any profits, right? So if you want to be making money, treat treat it like a job. So you'll make money. And then this slideshow,、um, I think this is what helped kick start my Etsy. Like I didn't make any sales the first five months, but after I study the trends,、um, I feel like after I studied this.、Um, I see what customer are wanting. The customer, the people that are in my, you know, target audience want.、Uh, start creating products that are what people are looking for. Then I start making consistent sales. I think this is it for me.、Um, excuse me, guys. With all the SEO and everything, I know that those are important too. But I feel like the your products. And in, incorporating trends with your product is what will help you make the sales too, because trends are important for you to make sales. Okay, so research what's trending or what is the current thing people are into, and try to incorporate it into your product. It doesn't have to be every single product. You can still make things you love because you still want to stay true to your brand, but try to incorporate some trend. Somehow into your product, because I think this was the this is what I think was the actual breakthrough for me. Because in five months, I only make five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, it was so little, you guys. And then it start picking up once I start researching about trends and incorporate into my product. And then some trends do better for seasonal, and then trend to be. Color, lifestyle, food, political—like about anything, you know. So、um, these are something that we're trending.、Um, it could be in any kind of niche.、Um, I know the planner sticker,、um, sticker world, unicorn, mystical creature, things like that are really popular. And then fruits too, like food. Oh my gosh, food is really, really popular too. And then also color. I think the boho, chic style,、um, neutral tone. Those are like super trending because of the minimalist lifestyle that people are into.、Um, the minimalist vibe that people are 
getting into is like and those color are more like earthy tone so i feel like those color are um really trending but if they don't go with your product then don't incorporate them but i know that you know in birthday um unicorn is trendy for a birthday shirt you know unicorn foods are really trendy so i do have um these items incorporated into my t-shirt design okay so look at trends you guys it will help you guys if you guys are not seeing that you know some of your things are not selling study trends study what's doing well even in other niche you know it doesn't have to be in your own niche and then i want to talk about quality versus quantity so this is pertaining to listing okay so i suggest having more quality listing than quantity because i see some shop that only have two listing and they're making tons of sale you guys i think it's because they did a lot of research about their product they put probably a lot of time and effort into making it um before they even launching it on their etsy site so i say like do research before you even list and take your time to photograph the item because anybody can just slap something together without any thought you know and just um snap sh- <laughs> just sh- photograph the item with bad lighting or with no lighting at all you know and just throw it on etsy and just do that with like a hundred items that they have on hand and just throw everything on etsy that's not going to work you guys um etsy requires proactive okay you need to be proactive you can't just be tossing thing and say oh after reach 100 listing i'm gonna start making sales you have to do a lot of work to build up to it and i'm not saying that with a lot of um listing you cannot make sales you could but you might not if you don't become proactive okay so also analyze your listing after six months and see what do well what doesn't do well for you and things that do well for you you will want to try to um, create more variations of it because that's what people are looking for so if you want to make more sales try to make things that people are buying and try to eliminate things that you see that it's not working and don't do those things anymore or if you you want to still offer them try to see what else you can do to make it better okay or ways you can in, um do it better so people will buy the one that um is not selling and then the last thing i want to address is quality does not mean you'll get more sales and just um it does work for some people but in my case, um, it didn't work <laughs> for me. In my case, it didn't work, okay? I find that it, um, when I get the consistent sales from the item that I put, the effort, the time to research, the trend, the products. So that's just what I found on my end. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm giving this tip, uh, this advice for you guys. But this may or may not work for everybody. It's just what I've found and what I've seen that other Etsy shop um, that only have under 10 listing, 5 listing, or some even have 2 listing, making tons of sales, you know. So it's possible. But yeah, but if you do want to list a lot of things, make sure they're quality too, not just slap things together and then hope for the best, okay? And then this is the last live show, you guys. We're almost at the end of my um, presentation here. So when you're starting anything, you guys, do not overthink, okay? The more you think about it, the more you're going to try to make it perfect, you're going to always be in paralysis analysis, and you'll never start your journey. 
So just start, you guys. And then don't worry about making a product or you know and stay in a niche that people is already yet. I mean, tons of things already been invented, and ideas already been around for ages. You know, people just twisted it, make it their own. So if you guys are in the same niche as me, it's fine, you guys, because I am. I I am me and you are you, so we don't have the same hand, the same brain. So we're gonna make things slightly different, okay? So you guys are welcome to be in the same niche. You guys are welcome to be in any other niche, you know. And if people tell you guys that you guys are copying them, like they obviously have inspiration from other people, from other things.、Um, So they're literally not the first people to come up with these inventions or ideas because it's been around for ages. Like the other day, there was a lady that told me about. She was saying that her like in one of my, the Etsy Facebook group that I was in, she said that her products are original, and she said she made a snowman. She she sells snowman stuff, and I was like, "But a snowman is not your idea. <laughs> the idea of a snowman has been there for probably how long? You know, I don't know when all these ideal inventions were created, but I know that you know everything's already been discovered and created. It just she just put her own special、um, style." To it to make it different from the rest of her competitor, but you know the idea is not really her.、Um, she just don't wake up and say,、um, you know, I want to put these things together, and oh, it looked like a snowman, and that she invented it. You know, so don't worry, you guys, don't overthink because we all start somewhere. It doesn't matter where we're at our journey. We start somewhere. And so, don't overthink, and don't let people tell you that you know you're copying them, because you are you, and you bring something different to the table. And plus, there are seven billion. I don't even know how many humans on this planet anymore, but there's a lot of humans. There's a lot of customer. There's a lot of seller. There's plenty of room for everybody to start business and become successful. So anybody that tell you that you shouldn't be doing this, that you're copying them, you know, don't listen to those voice. If this is truly you and you want to start a business, then go for it. Because of people telling me all these things in the past that stopped me from pursuing my business for the longest time, and I finally like just forget about all these voices. Like they still trickle in once in a while, but. I'm just like you know, forget it. They don't live my life. They are not in my shoe. And they are not paying my bills. So I'm not gonna listen to them, you know, because it's plenty of room for all of us, you guys. This plenty is huge. So don't worry about all the naysayers out there. Go for it, you guys. And then the last thing I want to say is kind of similar to the first thing I say, like. Don't overthink. Don't overthink things.、Uh, you don't have to give everything right to start. Just prepare, have a plan before, and then just start. You guys, you you don't want to just like say today I wake up and I, I want to open as a shop and just open as a shop. You need to have some kind of plan in place, but it doesn't have to be perfect.、Um, you just kind of have a plan, some ideas, and. Have your equipment and supplies ready to go, and then just start. You know, but I, yeah, that's why I say just start, but not just like wake up one day and say I want to start Etsy and just start throwing a bunch of things on Etsy. <laughs> I mean that could work, but you know when I start things, I like to do some research, test things out,、um, master my.、Um, Product, make sure it's a quality product before I start. Okay, and then I can improve on that. Just like when I'm going to start 
uh, exercising, I do do some research a little bit, and then I just start. I don't try to like overanalyze, um, do all these research, and just make myself feel discouraged and don't do nothing. Like I just do a little bit of research, and then I just jump in, and you know start start rolling the ball and just figure things along the way. Okay, so you will learn things and gain experience along the way, and you can see what works and doesn't work and tweak it and you know um it's just the whole process of this journey okay so you guys that's all i have for you guys um don't be afraid to start to start it never hurts to start you guys um the only thing you will regret is just not starting so start you guys go for it i hope um this give you guys some ideas some tips and to start your own etsy journey or if you guys are not on etsy um just like whether whatever um you want to do in your life i hope that this encourages you guys and if you guys are want to start etsy i hope this give you guys some pointers it's this is probably like a long presentation but Anyways, you guys, take care and leave um, questions and anything down in the comment. And I will see you guys in the next video. In the next video before the New Year start, I want to talk about um, my New Year, my vision board for 2021 and what I have accomplished. So that will be my last video for 2021. And so I will see you guys on that video. Bye, you guys. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys haven't subscribed. Take care. Bye, friends.